Hi everyone, it's Don, and I hope you're having a fantastic week. And recently in the news, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines has come out with some new policy changes. One of them is going to be kind of controversial. There's going to be both sides of the argument, some agreeing, some disagreeing. But on the other one, I'm pretty sure pretty much everybody's going to say, what the heck? So let's get into it right after this. So the very first one, which is kind of controversial policy change they're doing, is they are no longer going to allow emotional support animals on cruise ships, uh, whether you have a medical documentation or not. Uh, they are allowing service animals, and by definition of a service animal, that is an animal that does chores or actions that a human being cannot do because of a disability. For instance, a seeing eye dog leading a blind person around, that is considered, obviously, a service animal. An emotional support animal is a very vague definition by most cases, but basically it uh, helps person deal with stressful situations and keeps them calm things like this, somebody who, who needs something in their lives to, to share love back to them and they can share love to them, especially happens to a lot of senior people, a lot of people who have gone through a lot of stressful situations in their lives it, and or single people, it, all kinds of reasons to have one. Uh, but there's been a number of different incidences occurring lately since the rise of emotional support animals and airlines are now looking at this right now because just uh, a few weeks ago a little girl was on an airline and she was severely bitten by an emotional support animal uh, about a month and a half ago two months ago a lady tried to get a peacock on board with a five foot wingspan and claimed it's her emotional support peacock and that's probably the biggest issue that the travel industry has is that there's no clear cut definition of what an emotional support animal is uh, so uh, and and a lot of people just laugh this off and they say uh, come on you, your animal support animal is not some people really do need these animals and it really does help them in their lives. The trouble is, uh, for instance, I've actually been contacted with somebody saying, I have an emotional support animal, can I bring it on board? And I said, well, I can make arrangements with particular cruise lines or travel industry areas. Uh, uh, what sort of animal is it? And I found out it's a five and a half foot tall horse. Uh, is their emotional support animal. So obviously I can't get a horse onto Caribbean Princess for a cruise, uh, much to the dismay of the person who was calling me because they were very serious about it. And therein lies the problem. The animals, uh, by definition of law, have not been given proper, you know, definition, set guidelines, rules. It's just a vague, yes, they are emotional support animals. And a lot of people are using this, as we always say, there's always a few bad apples can ruin the whole crop. And in this case, it's, it's, it's the same way. Um, people who want to take their pets on their vacation with them, who aren't really support animals, get them certified as a support animal and just so they can travel with their pets. And of course, um, if it's your emotional support animal, yet you leave it in the hotel room for 10 hours while you're at Disney World, is it really your emotional support animal uh, on a seven day vacation? Um, I, I would probably think not. So uh, that's your pet. And uh, the travel industry is really fighting this and the governments are trying to get together and solve this. But as of now, Royal Caribbean has decided until regulations catch up with the, the new trend in emotional support animals, 
they're just saying no I service animals are okay and they have to be certified and fit into a criteria and the airlines are starting to do the exact same thing so if you're thinking of traveling with an emotional support animal anytime in the near future I'd be double checking with whatever carriers or whatever services you decided to go with including hotels that now allow it who knows they may start disallowing it because the number of incidences where service animals have uh, attacked or for instance they uh, urinated on long flights all over the seats of the airplane uh, things like this happen all the time uh, they're not in the cargo hold down below uh, they are in the person's seat and for 10 hours the dog's gonna go to the washroom at some point and where is it gonna go it's gonna go right on your airline seats so all these things have to be considered so that's the very first one and I know there's gonna be pros and cons you know some people really want to have a service animal that they love and they want to travel other people think it's hokey and uh, doesn't you know you're crazy if it's an emotional support animal it should be a puppy or a cat and it shouldn't be a horse or a peacock or a beaver uh, there's but there's all kinds of them out there and the governments and the travel industry have to take it all into consideration the next thing that they've gone and done is yeah i'm gonna say it's not going to be received as well if you go on to say a royal caribbean site and you're looking to book your cruise and you say oh there's the cruise i'm interested in you click and there it is and it usually brings up two options one with a refundable deposit and one with a non-refundable deposit and of course the non-refundable deposit is normally a cheaper rate or it can also have incentives in that booking as well for instance if onboard credits are offered on the for instance say, say we're talking about a balcony it might say $50 per person on board credit for the refundable deposit. The non-refundable may say $100 on board credit per person. So that there are a lot it's more incentive to go with the non-refundable deposit. Cheaper cabin, cheaper rate, and you get an onboard credit. Well, Royal Caribbean has looked into their analytics over the past year and said, you know, when we talk to our passengers and our clients that hundred that onboard credit for the non-refundable deposit really doesn't make their decision whether or not they're going to sail with us or not so we're just going to end it as of shortly so uh, you will no longer start to see onboard credits when you're booking a non-refundable deposit so you will get a cheaper rate that stays the same but your refundable deposit might still have an onboard credit attached to it although it was would be smaller than the one that used to be attached to the other booking so if they've gone and done this now with non-refundable deposits i can pretty much guarantee within a certain timeline that you're going to look and you're going to see the good old refundable deposit on board credit analytics are suddenly going to show hey well if the cheaper rate and an onboard credit really you know the onboard credit really doesn't sway somebody to the cruise well the non-refundable the refundable deposit that smaller onboard credit it's probably not going to sway anybody neither so let's get rid of that one as well and I did just have a conference call with Royal Caribbean, their monthly call, and they tried to put a good spin on it, saying it really doesn't make any difference, no one really pays attention to it, and I couldn't help thinking the whole time in my head, uh, well, yeah, it might not make the, be the final decision in why I booked that cruise, but it's a perk that you're taking away from me now that I'm not getting anything extra for. It's not like you're changing the onboard credit and saying we're going to give you an automatically $100 cheaper ticket price. Nothing else is changing except you're not getting that onboard credit anymore. So you can spin it as best you want, but completely uh, transparently, it, they're just taking something away from you that you used to get included in your fare so 
Yeah, that's me who sells Royal Caribbean as an agent telling you, yeah, they're just taking something away from you. And yeah, I, I, uh, I don't really like it as an agent. That onboard credit is a selling point for me. Sometimes, you know, that can make a difference. You know, every, I always say, every dollar counts when you're booking your cruise and you're trying to save money. Uh, you know, if you can only sail every three years because that's how long it takes you to save for a cruise, getting a hundred dollars to spend on board can be huge, uh, especially if you're a family or even just by yourself. A hundred dollars. I can put towards one of my shore excursions. Uh, on my next cruise alone, my shore excursions are gonna be close to $1,000 just for me. And I'm going by myself. So every savings I can get, I look for. And this just seems like corporate saying, hey, we can save some money right here. And we don't think it's gonna impact our bottom line too much and the People who sail with us are still going to remain sales, you know, loyal to us and it won't make that big a difference to them. There'll be some grumblings, there'll be some gripings, and then it'll be forgotten as if it never existed. But I just thought I'd better let you guys know that's what's happening as of right now. So two announcements. No service and no sorry, no emotional support animals at all, only Documented service animals are allowed on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. They're the first in the industry to do it, but I would suspect that you're going to start hearing about it from other cruise lines as well uh, now that it's been introduced into one of the mainstream cruise lines. Nextly, that onboard credit for the refundable deposit, non sorry, non refundable deposit is gone bye bye it's history what do you think about that um i'm guessing there's not going to be too many comments down below saying way to go royal caribbean thank you way to go <laughs> can you imagine hey they took a hundred dollars away from me all right yeah no <laughs> that's not gonna happen at all so i hope you liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up you want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.